Could we have a volunteer of, a of Asian ancestry? And I need somebody who, I need someone who's European. I want to make a statement before we do this, okay? It's okay to talk about differences in our physical features. It is not racist. Look at Manolin and look at Emmy. They have different physical features, right? You can tell that, that Manolin is, is not Polish and Irish. It's not racist of me to point this out. Okay, we're gonna start there. You ever look at your eyes? What do you think about your eyes? They're cool. I think they're really round. I don't think, like, so obviously Asians have this stereotype that they have small eyes or like squinty eyes. I mean, I don't think I got squinty eyes. Squinty eyes? Yeah. Is that what people say? Yeah. Hold usually, the mic close. Yeah, usually my friends make fun of my eyes. Yeah. Um, what is different about you? Look at her eyes. What's different about your eyes than her eyes? You have this fold and all it does is like what you say, it sort of pulls the eye. Can I, can I just touch your eye? You touch your eye, right? Can I? Sure, I guess. No, no, I, I won't touch you. your eye, but listen, okay. it pulls, <laughs> exactly, it does exactly that. So the fold pulls the eyelid, it's going to pull it a little closed and it looks like the so-called slanty eye thing, right? But it's not. But it's not. So notice how, like th right here, the, there's more of a straight line. The eye is more in relation to the, to the forehead. That's the brow bone, okay? You see that? That's fairly common um, among people of Asian ancestry. Bro, watch this. Bro, what's your name? Cole. Cole? Look at Cole. Turn, turn sideways. Look at his, can you, can you guys see? Like, look right here. See like how, out, see how his eyes are back compared to Madeline's? That's more common. I call that the criminal forehead kind of thing, you know? <laughs> but like I kind of have, well, you can look at, see mine is like that too. Like yeah. my, my forehead goes out and then my eyes are back. Yours are much, much more, less pronounced like that. So we tend to see what would, but appears to be a flatter face, but it's only that one particular part of the face. Why, let's just do noses while we're here, right? When you move to colder climates, have you ever, bro, you ever been outside on a really cold day and you go like, and it hurts? Like you really feel the pain? Yeah. Okay. That, you can't have that, right, when you're in cold climates. And so we think that the nose may have evolved, and we see this because the further north we go and the colder climates there are, the, lar the longer the nose is and the more pronounced the bridge, the larger the nose, right? So the idea is that it adapted, your nose, my nose, or whatever, adapted to these colder climates because it cools, or warms the air and moistens the air in these cold, arid climates. What about lips? So you're, you're Polish and Irish. Hang on, let me see your, wait, do, you, do you, what do you think about your lips? Um, one of them's thinner than the other. Which one's thinner? My top lip. So do you know why people, some, you see more lips? Because I look around the room and I see people with different lip sizes. Do you know why that is? Do you have any idea? We, do, we don't know. It could be sexual selection that in some areas of the world, larger lips were really preferred sexually. It could be because there's a moistening quality. The larger the lip surface, the more moistening happens in the body, right? You sort of can, and, and um, so it could be any, any number of things. Like we don't, we don't really know, but it could be, there are theories out there on that. So, so um, let's do that. Hey, here's one, right? So we see differences in ears. Everybody has different ears and compare his ear to my ear, mm -hmm. just on average size. And mine's probably a little larger. And maybe because I'm aging as well, it, maybe it tends to get a little bit larger than average. Let's do skin color. So like, you know, here's another one, right? Like skin color is, we, so take a look at this map. So this, we have a much better understanding of how it is that human beings came to have different skin pigmentations. This is where human beings first really started to emerge, came into our own with very dark skin. And the dark skin is, you know, from a pigmentation called melanin. And melanin just happens to have this other adaptive characteristics that darkens the skin. And we need, and the way it works, it's actually fairly simple, right? You need a certain amount of UV from the sun because UV allows us to produce vitamin D, resolves us to synthesize folic acid and make calcium and all the things we need to be strong and healthy and all of these things, right? So you gotta get UV, but you can't get too much UV because we don't have body hair anymore. So you gotta protect ourselves because UV, too much UV causes skin cancer. Skin cancer is not a new thing, my friends. Skin cancer has been around forever and ever and ever. 
So the body has adapted. So one way it adapts is to produce more melanin, which means there's a natural protectorant from the UV rays of the sun. As people moved north and moved south, they needed less melanin. In fact, the skin really benefited by lightening, by producing less of the melanin because the skin needed more of the UV in the sun to create vitamin D, calcium, folic acid, and all of the things that are necessary for a healthy body. So when we move, what we see is populations of people who evolved in the northern latitudes or way in the southern latitudes, we see that one of the adaptations was the lightening of the skin, meaning that if you go to the north and you have really dark skin and you, in the winter times, in these cold months, you don't get enough UV. Your body isn't really producing the kinds of vitamin D and calcium and so on that it really needs to thrive, which is, by the way, it's quite fascinating that in these northern climates, like here, in some ways, it, in a place like Penn State, we don't talk to people who are darkly pigmented about the importance of making sure in the winter months you get enough sunlight because you really need that for your healthy body. We talk to white people about not even getting light-skinned people about don't get too much sun in the summertime because you have skin cancer, but there's another message for darker, more darkly pigmented people, which is in the wintertime, when it's really cold, make sure you get as much sun as you possibly can. So like on a sunny day, like a couple days, like yesterday, make sure you get out. We haven't had sun at all, all year long. Make sure you get out and get some sun in your body, right? That's important. So we see that skin, if you have really more darkly pigmented skin or more lightly pigmented skin, all it does is tell us about your ancestors and where they were. And this is the nature of, the, you know, we're, we're always trying to change things up, but we're not looking back at our ancestors.